Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Matthew's Catholic Church as we continue our Lenten journey on this fifth Sunday of Lent. Today's Mass intentions are for Sister Mary Otto Mueller, Sister Catherine O'Donnell, and all the school sisters of Notre Dame. The St. Matthew Men's Club Fabulous Fish Fry continues through Good Friday. There were 254 meals served on April 1st. Many thanks to the Men's Club, Rosary Society, Scouts, and parishioners who volunteered. For the next two Fridays, in addition to drive up, we will also resume indoor dining. Tomorrow, Sunday, at 2 p.m., our parish communal penance service will take place here in the church. There will be a collection for donations to Neighborhood House at the door. All are welcome to attend. Two pages today. Next Saturday, April 9th at 7.30 p.m., the Consortium Carissimi will be performing at St. Matthew's. This vocal and instrumental ensemble specializes, specializes in the performance of early Baroque Italian music. Their program, Miserere, features sacred music of Lent. Please see the bulletin for details. There will be a second collection after communion today to benefit Community of Saints Regional Catholic Schools. Please be generous. The funeral mass for Kevin Clemen, grandson of Marcy and Leo Kegler, will be this Thursday, April 7th at 11 a.m. Visitation will begin at 9 a.m. Thank you and welcome. Please join me as we take a few moments in quiet to prepare ourselves for Mass. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. We gather this evening to celebrate the mystery of Christ. 
We come as sinners confident in God's mercy, God's graciousness. And so we pray. For victory over evil, we pray, Lord, have mercy. For courage over fear, we pray, Christ, have mercy. For everlasting peace, we pray, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, by your help, may we walk in that same charity with which your Son handed himself over to death out of love for the world. We pray this in the name of Jesus. He lives with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, who opens a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters, who leads out chariots and horsemen, a powerful army, till they lie prostrate together, never to rise, snuffed out and quenched like a wick. Remember not the events of the past, the things of long ago consider not. See, I am doing something new. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? In the desert, I make a way. In the late wasteland, rivers. Wild beasts honor me, jackals and ostriches. For I put water in the desert and rivers in the wasteland for my chosen people to drink, the people whom I formed for myself, that they might announce my praise. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. God has done great things for us. God has done great things for us, filled us with laughter and music. When our God led us back to freedom, in we beheld the promised land again. Our mouths were filled with laughter and rejoicing. Through the sun, as springs within the dark. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I consider everything as a loss because of the supreme good of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have accepted the loss of all things, and I consider them so much rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having any righteousness of my own based on the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ the righteousness from God, depending on faith to know him and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by being conformed to his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. It is not that I have already taken hold of it or have already attained perfect maturity, but I continue my pursuit in hope that I may possess it, since I have indeed been taken possession of by Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I, for my part, do not consider myself to have taken possession. Just one thing, forgetting what lies behind, but straining forward to what lies ahead, I continue my pursuit toward the goal, the prize of God's upward calling in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Lord be with you and, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, and then early in the morning, he arrived again in the temple area, and the people started coming to him, and he sat down and he taught them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery. They made her stand in the middle. And they sent and they said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law of Moses, we are commanded to stone such a woman. So what do you say? They said this to test Jesus hoping that they would have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and he began to write on the ground with his finger. When they continued asking him, he straightened up and he said to them, let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And then again he bent down and wrote on the ground. In response, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. Then Jesus straightened up and he said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go and from now on, Do not do this sin anymore. The Gospel of the Lord. For Jesus Christ. Even in the midst of the misunderstandings and the confusion of Jesus' disciples or the authorities or the crowds who came to hear him, 
Even in the midst of that, Jesus remains patient. The issue in this gospel story is not whether adultery is to be condoned. It is not even whether this woman is guilty or not. The heart of the issue is simply, am I willing to condemn someone who has made a mistake, who has sinned? Am I willing to condemn? The Pharisees are indignant with this woman, and yet Jesus is far more accepting of her than all those others. Both Jesus and the Pharisees thought that the woman was wrong, yet the difference was the way in which they dealt with her. The Pharisees were pitiless and they were cruel. They wanted her to suffer and to be excluded. They wanted her life. Jesus' interest was to help the woman. He wanted to heal her and make her whole. He wanted to redeem her. That doesn't mean that Jesus was soft on sin. He was simply treating her with love and respect. It is one thing to condemn the conduct of a person. It is quite another thing to condemn the person. Some think that the opposite of con condemn is to condone. The word condemn comes from the Latin word that, meanings, that means to damn, to hold someone as worthless, useless, cursed. The opposite of condemn is not condone, it is to save, which means to help, to heal, to hold valuable. The opposite of condemnation is salvation. In the finale of this story, Jesus gets down to the heart of the issue. He says he did not come to condemn anyone, but to save. The disciples of Jesus are called to be instruments of peace, mercy, and reconciliation. In Paul's writing to the Corinthians, he says, Whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away, and new things have come. All this is from God, who has reconciled us to himself in Jesus Christ, and has entrusted to us the message of reconciliation. We are to be ambassadors for Christ, God appealing through us. In light of our work as ambassadors for Christ, we are empowered to carry out the message of reconciliation. This Sunday offers us the opportunity to carefully reflect among other things, to reflect on the practice and the morality of capital punishment. In a highly polarized society, it invites us to reflect on the practice of condemning or demonizing one's opponent. Remember, we are ambassadors for Christ. We are here to reveal God's love. And we're told that God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. But in order that the world might be saved through him. We pray the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. We turn to the Lord God and we make our prayer. For the church, that we may bring mercy and forgiveness to all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the violence in Ukraine, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in authority, particularly in our judicial system, that they may temper justice with mercy to seek the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have been sentenced to death or to life without parole, that they may find comfort and peace as children of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may continue to fast, pray, and give alms as our Lord guides us to do, and that those habits may extend beyond this Lenten season. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick of our parish community, especially Jeremiah Baker, Louise Bridell, Bernie Klein, Caroline Gomez, Ray Knotts, Greg Lothenbach, Hendrick Morrison, Anna Marie Mosing, Virgil Rothler, and Lorraine Taper may be healed in body and spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our intentions spoken and unspoken, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Marlene Brown and Kevin Clemen, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Accept our prayer, Lord, and grant what we ask in the name of Jesus. He lives with you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. sacrifice be acceptable to God the Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. 
Hear us, Lord. And having given your people the teachings of faith, purify them by the effect of this sacrament. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift, Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right and just. just. All powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. The suffering and death of Jesus, your Son, brought life to the whole world, moving our hearts to praise you. The power of the cross reveals your judgment on this world and the kingship of Christ crucified. We praise you, Lord, with all the angels and saints. We join in their song as we sing. Lord God, you are holy and to be glorified. You love the human family. You walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is Jesus, your Son. He is present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for his disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine and grant that they become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, at the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and he gave you thanks and praise. He blessed and he broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples and he said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body. It will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup and again gave you thanks and praise. He gave the cup to his disciples, and he said, Take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be poured out for you and for all that sin be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. And so, Father, we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son. You led him through the passion and death of the cross to the glory of the resurrection. You have seated him at your right hand. And now we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the cup of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church, an offering in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ, a sacrifice handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we share. Lord, renew your church by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people. 
together with Francis, with Bernard, our bishop, and all your people that in, wor that in a world torn by strife, your church may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and peace and reconciliation. Remember our sisters and brothers. We pray for Sister Otto Mueller. We pray for those who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ. We pray for all those who have died, whose faith you alone can know. Admit them to the presence of your glory. And grant to us that when our earthly pilgrimage is over, may we come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, in union with Mary, the Mother of God and our Mother, with St. Joseph, with the Apostles and the Martyrs, with all the saints, May we praise you and give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Pray now as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from all that is evil. Grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety. We wait in joyful hope for the coming of the Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us show to each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. You may be seated during communion time. For those wishing to receive communion, please fully extend your hand to receive the host. St. Matthew's is not distributing communion on the tongue at this time. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ.
We pray the prayer found on the back side of the worship aid. Heavenly Father, from from age to age, you have never failed to come come to the aid of your people. Bless Bless and protect the people of Ukraine. For those who have fled from their homes, give them comfort and shelter. For those who have stayed to fight, give them courage in battle. For those who have lost homes and livelihoods from missile attacks, give them aid and the strength to rebuild. For those who worship in the streets and in underground shelters, hear their prayers and calm their fears. For those who have died, welcome them to the warmth of your embrace. Make your presence known in all the leaders that strive to protect them, in all the neighbors who welcome them, in all those who serve them, and in all people of goodwill who are praying for their safety. Our Lady of the Ukraine, pray for us. Our Lady of Kiev, pray for us. There are just a few announcements before we conclude. Two o'clock tomorrow afternoon is our parish celebration of communal penance. You're all invited. I encourage you. I invite you to bring your friends and family with you. It's the It's one of the two times a year that we come together to celebrate in that fashion. The liturgical schedule, the schedule for ministers for Holy Week, is on the table in the back of the church. So if you are a greeter or a reader or a communion minister or an usher or whatever, please take a copy of that schedule. And finally, after the conclusion of the Mass on Holy Thursday, The Eucharist will be available for prayer and adoration in the chapel. And I would encourage you to to plan to spend at least a little bit of time in quiet and in prayer. Now those who are going to bring the Eucharist to the homebound, please come forward. Our sisters and brothers await your visit and the grace of this sacrament. Take the body of Christ to them, along with our prayer for them, and the assurance that they are one with us in faith, hope, and love. Go in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Gracious God, Grant that we may always be counted among the members of Christ in whose body and blood we share. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, bless your people who long for the gift of your mercy. Grant that what they desire, they may receive. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us now go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God.